Hello and welcome back to Reviving an Idler. Thank you for checking in again. Uh, yeah, we are enjoying a lovely Scottish summer. It's the first sort of full week of nice cosy weather we've got and as you can see I've got my uh, summer plumage going on here. We've managed to level out the boat as you saw in the last episode and we're now finally getting to crack on with some of the ribs. So absolutely fantastic. Really, really happy to be in this place. So a couple of the discoveries I've made off camera is the sawn ribs appear to be fastened with iron nails and as you could well imagine they are completely rotten so it's thrown up a fresh spanner into the works on that one. I'm not entirely sure how you go about removing completely rotten fastenings. At the moment what I'm attempting to do and you guys may have some better ideas for me and um, please leave them in the comments but what I'm going to try is taking out the big solid bolts that I can, removing any screws that have been placed in uh, throughout her life um, and the majority of the metal fastenings, uh, iron fastenings I believe are going to be so corroded that I think I'll just be able to pull the frame out pretty much by itself. Going forward I'm going to remove this frame in its entirety and I'll hopefully we'll use that as a template because I need to make exactly this one again because this side of the boat is completely fine. In an ideal world this is then going to be able to flip straight over and go into this side so I'm going to start with that. In the meantime we'll just uh, do a little montage of trying to get this out and uh, I'll catch back in two seconds. That's a wee bronze bar that has been hammered in there for a wee while and actually not too shabby. Yeah that could be, I mean, that would have lasted a while in there. That didn't need to come out. I will of course replace it with new but it's uh, that's not too bad. So you are currently looking forward, bow is that way, and this is the, the knee attached to the frame that we're working on up here. Um, what I've done so far is I've removed the bronze through bolts that nail the floor to the frame, and I've removed as many screws and bolts that I can see on the actual frame through that go through the planking. However, the majority, like I've said already, are iron fastenings, are iron nails. So, uh, What you're able to see here is the what's left of the keel bolt coming up through. And then you'll also see the tops of a couple of bronze bolts here and here. And they go through the keel. So they bolt the floor to the keel itself. And then the keel bolt there, that goes through the wooden keel and down into the ballast keel as well. So I need to get rid of these in order to drop the ballast keel. Um, however, first of all, I need to get this floor out so I can then see about removing this frame and what's left of this frame, make a replacement, and then I'll be able to just replace the whole lot, hopefully. Now, the good news is that there doesn't appear to be anything holding in, anything going through the planking into the floor. I know that's sometimes the case in some boats, but it doesn't appear to be the case in ours. I didn't see any evidence of bolts when I was scraping, and I made sure to scrape uh, on the outside of the planking around the side of the floor as well, just to make sure that there wasn't anything holding it in. So that's fine. That means the only things holding this in now are the vertical bolt, keel bolt, and these ones there. So I'm going to try and lift this out. Fingers crossed it's all going to come out in a wonner. However, there is some serious damage going on. There's a nice bit of rot running through there, a bit of iron sickness. So this whole bit there is probably going to crumble, but I want to try and keep as much of it in one piece as I can, because like I say, I'll use this as the template for the one going back in. Gives you a good chance to show you the state of some of that wood. 
So that's obviously just broken across there, across the grain. That actually looks like that's been broken for a while. And there's the remainder of a fastening. So we are bolted, the floor is bolted into the planking. After all, we just can't see them because they're fully corroded. I mean, I can probably not quite crumble that. Well, here we have the very bottom of one of the floors. I think everybody will agree that that is completely unsalvageable. <laughs> and that would originally have sat something like that. So it's a sizable, sizable lump of wood when you see it like that. Cool. Keep going. So I'm just looking over on the other side, on the port side of the boat, and I've just levered out the remainder of that rib, just so we can have a wee peek at what's going on underneath. I want to confirm what we're dealing with. And as you can see, that is the screws that we have got to deal with. Now they're quite thin, they're very flat actually and tapering slightly off to a finer point and quite wide. They're almost like little strips of metal, like almost like you'd get in a nail gun, um, but slightly larger. So that's fine, knowing that we have these flat nails uh, is good because it means, hopefully it means for the rest of them we should just be able to lever out the ribs. Um, there's no threads on them, they're not, they're not barbed or anything like that, so it's going to make pulling them out a bit easier. The main concern I had was that they would be so corroded and so fast and so stuck that when we did actually pull the rib off that it would either break as it has in some of the cases, leaving a little bit in the planking, which if it's fully corroded will be quite difficult to remove, or it will have gripped so firmly that it will pull the nail through the planking and thus destroying any chance of salvaging the planking on the other side, or at least making it quite difficult. So. Thankfully, at least with this one, we've not had too many break. There are a couple, um, but the majority of them are actually still there. And if they're still there, hopefully that means I can hammer them back out through the planking, as you would with the copper nails, and uh, reuse the holes uh, where they're not corroded. Because they are iron, I am going to have to be careful now, because we have got iron fastenings where the frames are, so I'm going to have to be extra vigilant for iron sickness. Um, hopefully, if it is present, it's going to be in a small enough... A zone that I'll be able to use a plug or something so if I could if that's something that I feel I need to do then we'll, we'll talk about that in the future plenty of time because we're not looking at fastening that back up yet but that's something to be aware of that we are. okay so we're at a little bit of a decision point so as we know the build stringer has been giving us a bit of uh, trouble since uh, we started this project it's going to be very difficult to move these ribs out of there, when we have to try and lift the rib off the nails, because we can't drive them out the other side. So the only thing I can really do, realistically, get this loose. This is a little bit of a worry because I still believe these stringers are stopping the boat from twisting too much. So I still don't really want to do this, but I think my hands are tied. I think I'm going to have to pull this stringer out. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, however, before I cut the heads off these bolts and then just lift the stringer out, I'm going to try and take some measurements from everywhere in the boat, as many places as I, as I can. Um, I'm going to tr mark with both knife and pen various places on the boat as well, so I, I, I can try and identify anywhere that may have shifted or moved. I will also mark the actual build stringer itself where the ribs intersect. I guess that's the plan made. I think we're going to have to do that. Is there any other thing I can do apart from remove that bull stringer? Oh. 
Okay, so we are now fully braced up. Got some big beams clamped in across her. I've taken some measurements um, from all sort of angles, all across the gunnels, lengths, etc, etc. I've got all my measurements from my string out to the gunnels that we took in the last video. So I've got a pretty good understanding of where the boat is. I've also marked onto the rib that's going to be removed the plank lands and that will tell me exactly where each plank is, the edges of each plank and I've also drawn down the side of the planking where the rib is going to match the planking and I've marked on the build stringers both the rib and the build stringers where that intersects as well so I've got plenty of marks, reference marks that I can use to put the rib back exactly where it came out Bear in mind I also have the nail holes on the other side as well which I can use if all else fails. So I've got a good understanding of where that is. Now as we mentioned a little bit earlier, I am going to have to take this build stringer out, uh, unfortunately. Uh, that is simply because I cannot lift the rib off the nails uh, with that build stringer in the way. So we're braced up and I'm just away to start cutting the heads off these bolts and then I can hopefully lift the thing out. So. Another little sped up montage coming your way. Now I'm going to grind the heads off these um, rather than using the saw because I want to try and preserve as much of the wood as I can so I've got a little bit more control if I just file away the head of the bolt rather than try and cut it off. didn't think about that bit. How am I going to get it out? <laughs> Both ends are underneath what's left of the decking. Best chance is I can bend it into that gap there and poke that end out there. Out the stern. Best laid plans of mice and men, eh? Okay, we're making it. There's a little flap on the back end of the shed because I haven't put the new tarp over the top yet. Um, thankfully, all I have to do is unclip that and it was able to flap around and open up a hole in the roof. So I can now bend the bilge stringer down into the bilge and then up through the gap in that planking there little bit jiggery pokery but we'll manage. Well there's been a dramatic and quite typically Scottish change in the weather and it has gone from that lovely sunny day uh, calm and still to blown and absolutely hilly and bitterly, bitterly cold. Hi, the weather spun round and is now coming in from the northeast, so it's bringing in all that really cold North Sea air, so that's uh, the reason for that. Making good progress on this, I still hope to get this one out today so we can start to make up the templates and the new one tomorrow. And the nails do appear to just be pulling out, so we'll just work our way up and uh, hopefully we get the whole thing out in a winner.
Ow! Well, that rib didn't have long to go anyway. I hardly put any force into that at all. Just wanted to see if I could work it up a little bit. You can see with yourself what happened. quite get it out in one piece, which is a shame. And I was hoping to get all of this weird backing in a oneer. So this is a uh, something that I have never seen on a wooden boat before and I hope never ever to see again. At some point in our history somebody's decided to change her hull shape a little bit. I'm not sure we might have mentioned this in an earlier video. I don't know if we have. However Instead of changing the frame or cutting a proper filler piece, they've used um, compressed cardboard. It's the same stuff, you know if you buy like a click together bit of furniture from a major retailer. And it's uh, all MDF and stuff. The backing place, so if, you buy like, if you buy like a wardrobe, the backboard would be made of this sort of papery MDF. And they just filled in the gap with uh, layers of this. Now I'm seeing this all over the boat, um, in various places down the side of the stringers to fill gaps between ribs and whatnot. So I don't know if that was a, 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 home, a homer, somebody just decided that that'll do the job, or, or if that was an accepted thing in boatyards at a time in history, I don't know. Um, needless to say, it's pretty unimpressive, given that that's a frame, i.e. a structural member of the boat, and it's spaced out at least, so the planking's being supported by uh, something that frankly is going to disintegrate if it ever became too wet. Not to mention the fact that it would become an absolute mould magnet as well. Pretty poor show really. Anyway, that's what it is now. We need to take account of that for the next frame. Because when we cut the next frame, we're going to include that extra thickness in the new frame that we cut. So I need to try and save as much of this as I can, stick it back in there so I can use this as the template. But that's us off to a start at least. So we've got the frame out, we've cleared the runway. Next step is to clean this all up a little bit and then go and take a template. Another thing to notice is the fact that a lot of the nails have stayed in. If I show you that a bit closer, you see that's the what's left of a nail head. So that's obviously corroded away to nearly nothing and it's been pulled through the planking. Needless to say these sharp edges have caught on the planking as I've been pulling it out and they've done some damage. So as you can see there's some fairly large holes where the nails have been pulled back out. It's not too impressive um, and with some fancy plug work I think it could be fixable um, but we'll talk about that in a later episode. So we've managed to get our frame out of the boat, albeit in two pieces, and it gives you a pretty good idea of what we're going to do next. We simply take the ribstock, do exactly what you think you'd be doing, plug it on, draw around it, and that's what we're going to use to start. So as you can see, I've done that already for both sides. And just like everything, we are looking to try and avoid any major knotting or anything like that. Ideally, I'd have the grain running full the way round in that curve. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to do that, but I'm utilising the grain as much as possible so we're not going across the rib anywhere, or at least not going across the rib too much. 
Um, it is a little bit through in this top section here, but thankfully the grain does curve a little bit there and starts to come round a little bit there. But it's nice and wide there anyway. So, quite simply, we're going to rough this out. Chop it out with a blank so it's a little bit easier to handle and then we can start thinking about uh, cleaning it up. So one of the nice things about taking a rib from the middle of the bowl first is that there's not a lot of a rolling bevel. If I take a square, this would be your inside face, if I take a square and plunk it on there, right down there by the keel, there's not a lot of bevel in there at all. But in some cases it's actually non-existent. And that carries on all the way up until you get almost to the tops of the frames up here before you start to see any significant bevel. Um, it's quite a different story on the inside. Um, although it's fairly flat, there is more of a bevel on the inside. But we can do that later on as we're fairing it. So as long as you get it close to what it needs to be, we can fair that later when we put the build stringers back in. It's important to remember, if you are doing this um, the way I am, one side of the frame is going to be your station line. Now, as you are working aft of the midpoint of the boat, that is going to be the front face of a frame. And as you are working your way forward, that's going to be the back face of a frame. And the reason is, is that allows you to take account of basically cutting the widest section and then you fair off the, the bevel onto the side of the frame allowing the, the planking to lie and wrap around. So as this is a slightly after frame, we're taking this line, so we've sat in the boat like that, bow stern, sat in there, drawn our plank lines on and this edge here, that back edge there, that's our widest part of the bevel and that would be the station uh, frame. So we draw along that. The interface is not as important as we can work on that later if we need to, we can fare that out as we go along. However, using a sliding bevel, I have determined that it's not too far off, but it does slightly slope in here. So it's actually the after side of the frame is slightly protruding, um, but not by much. Not sure you can really see that. As you can see, I've drawn out the frame and marked off all the bevels as we go away around. First thing I want to try and do today is basically rough these frames out along these lines. Now these lines are drawn in marker to make them nice and obvious, but obviously the marker pen has a dimension and strictly speaking our line is actually going to be just inside of that marker line there. Just in there. So if I cut it to the line that still gives me plenty of room to allow for fairing. And the, the dimensions we're talking about, we're only talking about a bevel of ranging up to about four or five degrees, which is not a great bevel, uh, to be honest. So I'm gonna cut this square and I'm gonna fair it by hand. And there we have it one sawn frame. Now obviously there's a lot still to do to this. Um, particularly it needs to be fitted and fared so it actually fits the planking and rolls around. This is uh, obviously just set at 90 degrees, there's going to be a bit of a bevel cut into there but there's also this section here and if you have a look at the old frames that we took out, they were packed out with this material here on both sides, and I couldn't take all of it out, it was too rotten to, uh, to save. Um, so what I've done is I've taken that mark, and there was another piece here, and that mark, and I kind of extrapolated out that line and followed that round. So that line's not going to be exact as per uh, the rib. So I'm going to have to take it to the boat, lay it in, and just fare away and try and find that exact line, because that's not currently being replicated. So I'll do that just by uh, laying it in the boat and working away at it. But it's good to know that even on these fairly cheap uh, power tools that you can buy in your local hardware stores, with the right blades on them, you can do a lot of work. I mean, this is a quite a sizable chunk of green oak. Um, it's still quite wet, to be fair. 
and it's it's doing a, an admirable job as you saw there I was able to cut it quite quickly so it just it just goes to show that you don't need massive tools to do amateur boat building obviously idler is quite a small boat i mean she's she's little more than a big dinghy she's uh, going to be built with diy hand tools and diy power tools nothing particularly fantastic and that's how she would have been built back in the day uh, if they had uh, power tools at all, it would have been perhaps a form of ship saw or a type of table saw or something like that. Uh, and that would have just been to speed up the process. But she would have been cut down to size, fitted and fared almost entirely by hand tools uh, back in 1940. And I, I think that's quite a nice thing to be able to continue in the boat. I will try and use hand tools as much as possible. Anyway, enough wittering, let's get this other one cut out and uh, we'll then take it to the boat and see how it looks. Can't resist a bit of a dry fit anyway. You never really might get lucky. Well, we've jumped back into the boat and we have popped our rib into its approximate position. Obviously, it would match these nails. Uh, just to give it a bit of a dry fit, and we can see that obviously this corner here is not correct and it's going to need a bit of fairing anyway in general. However, it's fitting the curve quite nicely, it's meeting the keel where it should, it's uh, meeting the strakes where they should as well. Um, so, yep, this is all going quite well. In order to speed up the process of fairing out the back of this curve uh, to match, I'm going to use our little template, a uh, glue gun and a couple of little chips. I've seen various methods of doing this and I particularly like uh, tips from a shipwright's method of using sticky labels. That's a genius idea. Um, however, I don't have any sticky labels. What I do have is off-cuts of plywood, a glue gun and uh, patience. So what we're going to simply do is take a blank bit of wood, lay that alongside the, the rib and then using little stickers glue them in place just along to meet certain points, as many as we can and they meet the ribs and when we take them off each of these points indicates a curve and then we just lay a rule along them, draw a fair line and that will give me the face we want to then transfer onto the back side of this curve for uh, the front part of our of our frame. And then that's it. We simply break it off the rib. Each of these points forms the contour on the outside of that frame. Transfer that across to the rib and we are laughing. So once we've uh, transferred the lines across, we then, using our plane, Work along the edge, chamfering it off, bringing the bulk of the material down to a level with the line. And then we work it then squaring from that line back out across the face using a, a square edge. So you probably can't see from there, but that's not too far off. It's got to come down about maybe a mil over the whole length of that. And as we go further down, it's a little bit more. It's around about two mil uh, across the whole uh, to bring it down in line. And I'll work my way on the whole rib like that, just taking little bits by little bits. You can use compass planes, such as this for varying degrees of curvature, depending on what you want to be using. And I feel that the advantage of having just a very, very low set plane, skimming across, just taking a, a micro shearing like that, Taking a tiny shaving, nothing wider than that, just allows you to have complete control over just bringing the whole thing down. It's almost like sanding, but slightly faster. So we're leapfrogging ahead a little bit. So I've made up one of the frames. Uh, Popped it into the boat, been dry fitting it, fairing and cleaning up the sides so that one is now fitting into the boat exactly where it should do, which is nice. I've now cut out the second frame and I've roughed that out to where it should be and now I've cropped the two together and I want to work them as a pair. I want to work the two of them so they come out as mirror images of each other so that when I pop them both back into the boat, um, the one on the starboard side should fit as it should and the one on the port side is likely to be a little bit um, misaligned. However, I'll use this um, to pull the fallen side of the boat back in as well. If I use it as a template uh, to pull it back in, 
it may be that we have to fade away a little bit more and allow it to stay uh, sunk out a little bit but if we can um, pull it back in I want to try and do that first. So what I've done is uh, I've worked across both faces with the plane and managed to get it uh, equaled up. I'm now just transferring the bevel from this side to the other side. So if I take this sliding bevel, take my mark on this side, flip it over to the other, and as you can see I've cut away a section to allow that to remain flush. If I do the same over here, so you get an idea of how it works. You take your bevel angle there on that one, and then we pop that across to the other one, and you'll see that there is a fairly sizable gap over here. So what we'll do is we will just take little chops off this back corner and keep checking it until it comes down to being flat. bevel to this side and then all I'll do is run the plane back over spanning the gaps and bringing everything even again. But once we've done this we'll end up with a sort of serrated knife effect, we'll have these sort of cutouts and then all I want to do is bring the remaining high spots down to be level with the two low spots. And here we have the two frames cut out and oiled and ready to be dry fitted into the boat. Well, as you just saw there, that we've got uh, both ribs dry fitted in, and I think they're fitting quite nicely. Uh, they're lying right on the edges of the, the upper planking, and the planks that have been kicked out, you can see that they'll be able to pull back in to meet the rib there. So I'm quite happy with these as they are. They may need a little bit of fairing further down the line, but as they stand right now, they are fitting quite well. Over on the port side, remember this is the damaged side, this is the side that's falling away, and I've cut a mirror image of the starboard side. So this doesn't fit quite so nicely. You can see this, there's quite a large gap on this side. What I'm hoping is going to happen once I replace the sawn frames either side of this one with, the, with a mirror image this side, when I put them in and then start fastening up, the pull from each of these ribs all together are just going to start taking the weight of this side a bit better and I want to start lifting it back up uh, into where it should be. Um, all the while I'll be continuing on replacing these, as you can see I've got a couple of uh, steamed uh, ribs just down this side which are ready to get their nails on. I didn't film that process, um, you've seen me do that a couple of times already now, uh, so there's no need to flog a dead horse on that one. So get them roved in, Mark will help me with the roving, and then we'll carry on uh, forward replacing steamed ribs as we go. Just offer you a little bit of a close-up on the gap we've got on the forward side of that frame where it meets the planking. So you, you can see there, there's quite a bit to come up on that side considering we've got a, a mirror image of this side here. So that's going to about do it for this part A of the reframing. Um, I was hoping to keep this a slightly shorter episode but um, there's a lot of content to cover. If there is anything you'd like to see in a bit more detail Send me a little comment and uh, I'll see what I can do to get that clarified for you. Part B will be coming very, very soon and we'll be looking at installing the floor, which is this large lump of wood that supports these frames and actually ties the frames to the keel beneath it. And we'll be looking at doing that in the next episode. I'll also be looking at the fastenings and how I'm actually going to fasten these sawn frames into the planking. 
Now, as you may have noticed, there is some damage to the planking where the iron fastenings have been going through. So I have a couple of options um, to explore in the next episode as to how I'm actually going to get around that, repairing the planking, whilst also maintaining the integrity of the planking to hold the fastening to the frame. So there's going to be a little bit of... Um, technical stuff to cover in the next episode but that should be with you as soon as I could possibly get it out in the meantime thank you very much for watching sharing and subscribing a big big thank you for me and idler on that one huge thank you to my patrons and everybody who is contributing to this restoration in means outside of simply watching the videos so a big big thank you for that take it easy and I look forward to seeing you in the next video bye for now